Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafke, and we're continuing my video series on Master Databricks and Open Source Apache Spark. This is Lesson 18, Structured Query Language. I'm going to be talking about how to create and use views on Open Source Apache Spark. I don't have any slides for this particular video, but instead we're just going to pick up using the same notebook we used in the last video. So you're going to want to scroll down in that notebook, which you can see here was called AW SQL EDA Spark 1. You're going to want to scroll down until you see where the video 1 ended and video 2 picks up. There'll be a link in the description to get you to this notebook, but just remember that the notebook actually contains code from two videos, the prior video and this one. First thing we want to do is create a view. The reason views are useful is twofold. One, they save us from having to rewrite complicated queries over and over again. They can save us from doing a lot of joins or calculating columns or any number of things. They can also reduce the number of columns that we want to take from a table, which can improve performance significantly. The other thing they do, as opposed to persisted data, is that they always go back to their source. For instance, in this view, we can see the customer, we're going to be going back to dim customer. So the advantage to this is that if the underlying table dim customer gets updated with new information, the view will always reflect that. A view is really just a named query that we can treat just as if it were a table. So it's a very kind of strange thing, but it's a brilliant idea that they came up with in relational databases so that we can have uh, dynamic data underneath the view that's always going to be current and we don't have to keep extracting it. If you kept extracting copies of the data each time to, you know, maybe a thousand different places with different variations on the, you know, format and what you want, it would be extremely difficult to keep everything in sync and you would never know if you have the current data. By being able to put a query on top of dim customer and you know dim customer is always up to date, we'll assume then you know you're going to get the latest, greatest data. So imagine we want to create, we can say create a replace, which means if it exists, it will replace it, a view called the customer. The idea of this view is we want to reduce the number of columns that we're going to pull to save us some resources because a lot of these columns are not terribly interested. We're mostly interested in the demographic type of data to help us understand our sales. We also want to change some names like this where we have English occupation and just call it occupation because we're only going to be looking at the English language data columns. And finally, we're going to calculate the person's age because that's more useful than knowing their birth date. But to get to the age, we'll take their birth date, subtract it from the current date using the date diff function, divide that by 365 to get that in years, and then cast the entire thing to an int. And that gives us age. So you can see what we've done here is we're creating a simplified view of the customer data that not only should perform better, but gives us some extra added value. Now I've, I've run this already. I can run it here just by clicking that arrow and that runs it and creates my view. And I've already run this cell. You can see what we have here, the gender, yearly income, etc. You can see that we indeed do have the age calculated for us, which is kind of nice. So we can use this view whenever we want to just get that kind of information, the subset of data we need and the age calculated. Let's get a little more complicated, a little more advanced. We're going to create a view called the sales info that contains the following. The sales amount from fact internet sales, all the columns from T product info, which we created earlier. It says view created earlier. Actually, it's now a table, right? T product info. We want to take dim customer education and from dim customer, we want to get their gender also yearly income and salary. So we're creating kind of a combination sales information with demographics from customer, et cetera, to give us a better handle so we can do one stop analysis without constantly going back and running queries and things like that to get the data. So we can use a view that will make it easier for us to do our analysis. We're also going to take from dim customer. Uh, if the customer has any children, there's a column called number of children at home. So we're going to just say, if it's greater than zero, then make it a yes, otherwise N. Because we'd rather just say, do they have children or not? We're not really interested in how many for our particular analysis. And we're renaming a yearly income. I think I pointed out a salary. And finally, we've got uh, get the homeowner flag. We're just going to change that to homeowner. And we're going to take the age and turn the age into an age band, right? Because age band is actually a little more useful. So the idea here is that when the age is less than 18, 
then we're going to say it's a minor. And when they're between 19 and 29, young, uh, then we'll go 30 to 39, middle. Now, this case statement, by the way, is a really powerful statement that SQL has and Spark supports. Okay, so let's take a look at our view. Again, we're going to be creating a view V sales info. And we've got all these columns are pulling in. Now, when we want to take something where we have an alias in our tables, we can just say VP, the alias, uh, dot asterisk. And that means give us all the columns from that particular alias, which is down here. So we're going to get all the columns from T product info, which is a table we created in the last video. All right, so let's take a look again. We got all that. Here's our case statement, number of children home. If, it's great, if it is greater than zero, then they're going to get a Y here, otherwise an N. And we're going to just return that as has children. Uh, house owner flag is going to come back as homeowner. And now we've got our case age thing that we talked about. It's going to break it into bands, minor, young, middle, late, middle, other. We're taking uh, education, number of cars owned, etc. English month name, we're just going to call month, month number of year and calendar year. So we're taking all these things. We're going to be getting some of the data from Fact Internet Sales. We're going to take data from V Customer, joining on the customer key. We're going to get our product information from T Product Info, joining on the product key. And we're going to get some of the data information from here. We're getting the order date and due date from the sales table and the sales amount. So those are probably the big things we're interested in seeing. We can run that. Now that we have this view, V Sales Info, we might want to check and see how many complete years of information do we have? Very often, you know, the data has to start somewhere and it ends somewhere else. So it, hopefully it goes up to the current date, but it may have started anywhere and we may not have loaded the data up to the current date. So what we're going to do is create a common table expression. I prefix those with CTE underscore here check months. And what I'm going to do in this common table expression, common table expression name as, and then the query. Common table expression is very similar to a view, except it's temporary. It's all part of one SQL statement. And when that SQL uh, statement's been executed, it disappears. What we're going to do here is get the fiscal year, the month number of year, and we're going to do a count, how many sales. We're going to do that on the V sales info table that we have, the, the one we just created, which is a view. And then we're going to group by fiscal year, month number of year, and order by fiscal year, month number of year. Then what we're going to do is use that CTE just like a Roy table because it's it will run this query and return this just like it were a view. And we're going to run a query on that, which is going to count by fiscal year. How many rows do we have now? Remember, because we have this by month number of year, what we're really counting is how many months of data do we have in 2011? We only have seven months. 2012, we have 12 months, and then again, in 2013, only seven. It looks like the only full year of data we have is 2012. If you're trying to do predictive modeling and things like that on the data, or trying to really get a sense of patterns, you really only have one full year of data that you can work with here. Let's do a query using V Sales Info again. This time, I'm just going to do a very basic query, and I've already run it, so I'll show you that. But I want to get the education category and the sales amount as total sales. But we don't want all the decimal places and things. It's kind of ugly. So we're going to say some sales amount. We're going to round it and put a comma zero, which means it'll just get rid of it. It's going to come back as a whole number integer. We're going to group it by category and education and order by total sales in descending, the DESC. And if we look down, we can see now we can tell that our best selling is at the top. So the highest value comes up as people with bachelor's degree buying bikes that's the highest total sales then we have partial college bikes total sales and then we have graduate degree so we're getting a sense just from this of what level of education do our customers have we're also getting a sense of what categories do they tend to buy this next query was actually inspired by the databricks notebook specifically i wanted to use the the visualization that they have built into it which does the either u.s map or country map or global map, which is kind of cool. The problem I had was that the dim sales territory table did not have ISO standard codes. So what I did was created a common table expression, again, CTE country codes, and I selected the territory key. But then what I did is use the case statement to decode the sales territory country 
from this long description into codes that are ISO standard. But by doing that, I could then get a standardized query that goes by ISO code. And notice I filter out anything where it's not one of those countries by, I assigned it an NA here, and now I can just say, don't give it to me if it's an NA. And you can see when I run this, I get the country code and the sales amount. It's not as riveting here because I don't have a map visual, but you still can see that it, it ran the query successfully. But just in case you want to save the data to permanent tables, maybe you've done some work with it and you decided, okay, I really like these views. I'm going to save the data to a permanent table. You might decide to drop the table later, but keep the view around so you can regenerate it. So here, what we're going to do is drop the table if it exists, and then we can create the table as, and then just select asterisks from V customer. Now this format of creating a table is kind of cool, right? It's a standard SQL thing to do. So you can say create table, give it a name, and then just say as, and then really run whatever kind of SQL query you want. And it will create a table. It's, it'll run the query and insert the rows into the table. And we'll do the same thing with T sales info here. We've got T sales info. We're going to drop it if it exists because I've run this code before. And we're going to do the same thing, right? We're going to create the table by just selecting from the view. So the idea is, again, we're just taking the data that's in the view and putting it into a permanent table. Let's see how our table now looks, just to make sure it really is there. Okay, looks good. Since we have two tables, T customer and V and T sales info, we can drop the view customer. So we'll get rid of the V customer and we'll get rid of V sales info because we already got them now in permanent tables. We can rerun those. Uh, we can rerun the statements to create those if we need to anyway. That covers our demonstration but you're not getting off that easy. What I want to do now is uh, walk you through doing homework, exercises to test your Spark Fitness. I know a lot of you guys out there are trying to get certified and make sure you really know this stuff. So I thought, why not give you some practice exercises to do? You're welcome. So just in case you get confused, as I often do, you can run these statements, which will give you descriptions of the tables. That way you know what to look at. The first problem statement is here which is write a SQL query that returns the total sales amount. And I give you the name sales amount, which is going to be on your sales info, wherever you want to get that. It can be from the tables above by the customer number, uh, by the customer's number of children. And I give you some help here. Total sales amount from T sales info. So it'll be from the table we did create there named as total sales group by number of children at home from T customer info. So you're going to need to join those together. If you want to get the answer to a problem, I've given it to you, but I hit it in this little four arrow sign here. If you expand it real quick, it shows you code. So that will show you the answer to problem one. Problem two, modify the query. You want to round total sales amount to a whole number, no decimal, and you want to sort total sales from high to low. If you want to see the solution, just click the four arrows and that will show you my solution for that. So you've got your homework, have fun, enjoy it, and let me know how it worked out. Put so wrapping up, not a lot to talk about here in terms of slides, but basically the point of this whole video was to show you that there's a lot of value to using views, that views offer advantages over permanently persisted data because it'll always go back to the source of the views and recreate it. So it'll always be current as long as you've kept the source current. And it's a great way to avoid a lot of redundant data that you're not sure how up to date it is. So it's a good way to do that. However, you may decide after you've created a view, maybe just for a temporary reason, so because you're going to run a bunch of queries against it, you may decide to persist the data from the view to a table and you can do that and then do a lot of queries against it. And then when you're done, just delete the table. So that's about it. I want to thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, put comments and let me know how this is working. If you're doing the spark path and this is the one you want to watch, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together.